collusion between big government and big tech with Biden's digital director employing Facebook to reduce voices that didn't fall in line. It's wrong, it's un-American, it's unacceptable, but is it unconstitutional? Is it illegal? Joining me now with his expert analysis is president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton. All right, Tom, so I appreciated your tweet yesterday standing up for me and my colleague Tucker Carlson after, you know, we got those emails that Biden's digital director reached out to Facebook asking uh, Facebook to reduce voices that were not uh, beneficial to the vaccine narrative. But I want to know, this obviously feels very wrong, but is it illegal what happened? Well, potentially, uh, the government typically can't uh, take actions against someone to suppress their uh, civil liberties, particularly their First Amendment rights. And in this case, you had the White House uh, directing Facebook quite directly uh, in using this Stalinist uh, Orwellian language uh, to reduce, to reduce, I don't even know what that means. It's just such a dangerous sounding term. Uh, the the uh, your ability to communicate on that platform, both yours and Tucker Carlson's. And of course, there are other emails where they're even more explicit. They wanted the material taken down. Uh, so uh, there's a law. You know, Judicial Watch has already separately sued another state agent, a state agency out in California that did something similar. They caused a judicial uh, Judicial Watch video to be taken down off of YouTube, and it's called the Ku Klux Klan Act, and it protects your civil rights and it provides. Of uh, course, uh, you know, causes of action against those who broke uh, who broke the law in that regard. Now, the question is, is there going to be any criminal liability here? But given the fact that the Biden White House and the president himself has endorsed this censorship, uh, that's probably not likely. So, uh, you know, you need to talk to some lawyers and figure out if you've got any options. I think you might, but we'll see. Of course, I ain't no lawyer, but <laughs> I tell you, uh, uh, this this is really uh, something new in terms of escalating the censorship of Americans. It's one thing for the White House to come out and say, look, we don't like the idea. You know, there's too much misinformation or too much uh, information out there that's at odds with science and we want people to take the vaccine. It's another thing to say, you need to turn this guy down. You need to target t- Tommy, L- t- Tommy Loren and take her down. Outrageous. It is. And the thing about it, I think that's so concerning is I think it would have been better, at least in in their eyes or in their case, if they would have said, hey, you said something about the vaccine. We're taking it down. It's misinformation. It goes against science, whether that's true or not. I think that that would have been better, a better defense for them to, to have. They didn't do that. What they did is they said, we want to reduce Voices like mine and the tweet that I posted to Twitter and to Facebook because I went back and I looked in in my archives of what it was and they had mentioned in that email that it was the day prior. So I looked back at the date, looked back at the beginning of April and I know exactly what it was. I had a tweet that very simply said and I posted it to Facebook saying, I will not personally take the vaccine. If you want to take it, take five of them, wear a mask to sleep, you go for it. That such a simple sentiment by me that's what they wanted to reduce you can't say that i was telling people to inject bleach in their arm or take ivermectin i personally said i will not take the vaccine so that to me is what makes this feel so criminal and so wrong is that i didn't Mm -hmm. say anything that endangered anybody i said a personal decision that i was going to make and that's what they were so threatened by that seems even worse to me it is, and, and it's your personal opinion, and you have a right to it. Um, it it's it's America, gosh darn it. And uh, you should be able to say things like that without being attacked and directed for censorship. When they say reduce, what they're telling Facebook, and, and you know how this works, you mention the word COVID, um, and you get uh, suppressed on Facebook immediately. You get vandalized with a statement saying, oh, you know, click here for COVID information. If you go to share the post, uh, there's a pause there, kind of warning you off from sharing the post. Uh, so that's what they mean by reduce. It's it's soft censorship. And in this case, it was directed uh, by a representative of the president of the United States, Joe Biden. And this has happened to me on several occasions. I mean, this particular one was back in April of 2021, but this has happened to me numerous times before that and since then. And it's actually been suspensions on Facebook. One in particular, I had a pilot on my show who were 
expressed concern about vaccine side effects impacting his colleagues in the cockpit, those having sudden heart problems while flying. That was flagged on Facebook. That was taken down by Facebook. I was suspended on Facebook for several days for that. There's been other instances where they've kind of messed with me a little bit. I want to get your take on this because people might think that I'm crazy. They, they might think that, you know, I'm, I'm being gaslighted, which is what I think. I've had numerous occasions where I've started really talking about COVID and about vaccines. And then especially on Instagram, little privileges on Instagram will get taken away with no notice. For example, I won't be able to put links on my stories. I won't be able to tag people on my stories. They won't load. They'll take forever to load and they'll say cannot load. And then magically after a week or so, my, my uh, ability will be restored. But it's little things that they do to me when I talk about COVID. And it's quite obvious to me, but it's very hard to prove. Yeah, well, you see this uh, elements of this in the Twitter files. They've got various methods of turning back your ability to communicate. Uh, some call it shadow banning. In your case, it's called I would call it shadow censoring, shadow, shadow suppressing, where they restrict your ability to communicate. And Twitter is turned off or at least is allowing more free speech on COVID. Uh, but it hasn't stopped at Facebook and it hasn't stopped at YouTube. Uh, and it's not only about it's not only censorship related to COVID. You say the wrong thing as it relates to disputing elections. You're also targeted with suppression and censorship. And of course, all of this coincidentally benefits the political agenda of Joe Biden. They wouldn't be doing it if they didn't have a po if they didn't have a political angle to it. And uh, I tell you, uh, there's been nothing like this in modern American history uh, because obviously, not only are you victimized. Uh, but you're, I'm assuming you have a big follower base. All of those folks who rely on you for information and your opinion and your take, they're denied access to the information. They can't get access to the information and they're censored as well. So the victims here are legion. It is. I mean, combined on my social media, I have about 9 million followers. So it's right. concerning when it happens. It's frustrating when it happens. But I think the biggest part is not being able to really prove it. And this happened with Facebook. And we know this because we've got that coalition of state's attorney generals who were filed that lawsuit against the Biden White House. That's how we obtained this email. But I wonder, we know what's kind of going on at Twitter because Elon Musk has put it out there. When will Google, Facebook executives, YouTube executives, when will they be called to the carpet? Will we ever see that day where they will be compelled to be honest about everything that they've done as we're seeing right now being done internally with Twitter? Well, we've seen documents that Judicial Watch has obtained showing that they were working hand in glove. They were actually providing them free advertising, HHS, to uh, push the COVID propaganda. And uh, of course, the back end of it was that they would uh, restrict access or restrict dissemination of material uh, that was politically inconvenient to the Biden administration. And the question for Congress is, are they going to swiftly take action here or is it going to be two years of trying to figure out what went on? We know what went on. The Twitter files has confirmed that virtually every federal agency that is important in terms of uh, big public policy issues have been involved in censorship and suppression, and it's ongoing. That has got to be turned off right now. And we can't wait for two years. We have to do it right now because right now, Americans are being censored by the tens of millions with the support of this president and all the president's men and women. I would love to see that Biden digital director, Rob Flaherty, I would love to see him have to testify before Congress. I would hope some oversight would happen. I hope it would be a primetime hearing. And if I were in Congress, what I would like to ask on behalf of, of myself and others that have been censored and restricted is, you know, what is it about Tommy Lahren saying that she's not going to get the vaccine? What is it that you found necessary from a public safety standpoint to reduce her? And I would love to see their answer because there's no way they can get around that. There's no way that they can say that, that I'm dangerous because I'm saying I'm personally doing this. You do what you want. So that is what I hope to see. Do you think that our new House majority has the guts, the intestinal fortitude to really go after this with the gusto it deserves? Well, if left to their own devices, no. Uh, this is why we have to educate our congressmen about the importance of this and make it clear to them that this is as much a priority as, quote, firing 87,000 IRS agents. They haven't been hired yet. The guys who are working now are already stamping and stomping on our civil rights. And Mr. Flaherty, in my view, the White House official and other officials involved in this, 
This isn't, quote, an agency scandal or a Biden administration scandal. In my view, they have personal liability, both civil and criminal, if they were abusing their offices, as they evidently were, to collude and target someone's civil rights and civil liberties. You've got this First Amendment right. And when the government comes in and stomps on it and an individual government official does it, they can be held personally liable. And it only ever it goes be. one way. You know, I, I've never seen an yeah. example of where a Republican leader has compelled anybody to do anything. And it's been done with the, the gusto that this administration works with big tech and big government and big pharma and big academia and big Hollywood and all of it. It only ever seems to go one way. Tom, thank you so I much. Mean, we for have an ex we, we, we've seen a little bit of that uh, in, in our work where some a Republican state official in Iowa uh, was trying to get Judicial Watch material taken down from Twitter, and Twitter said no, uh, but they were pushing it on Facebook and YouTube. So the temptation's there, and this is why your fight is so important, because it protects Americans of all political stripes, because this temptation to use government to suppress your political speech, that's going to be tempting to both Republicans and Democrats in the medium run. But the in difference the short is run, it's Republicans the left, can't get away with me, it. believe me, anyone will be able to do it. Yeah, but Republicans can't get away with it. That's the thing, because every time if a Republican were to do something like this, I'm not saying that they don't want to. I'm sure they do. But if they did and it could be proven the way we've seen with this Facebook email, with these Twitter files, that Republican or that that official in any administration that had an R behind it would no longer be employed and they would be called to the carpet because there would be national outrage about it. That person would be canceled. So that's the right. frustration here is nothing is ever applied equally. But we appreciate everything that you guys do at Judicial Watch. We know that you've gotten so much information, especially as it pertains to California. And as a, a former resident of California, I always look to you guys and everything you did, especially when it came to election integrity. So thanks for all you do. And thank you for being with me today. Hey, thank you, Tommy. And, and soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, you know, Tucker Carlson has deeper pockets than me, so maybe Tucker can do it first and I'll just ride the wave. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. All right. Up next, we finally have a Speaker of the House and he's a Republican, kind of. Brandon Tatum joins me next. Let's get into it.